Hello everyone! Today let's take a look at probably the most controversial design choice to date regarding PvE invasions. But first, let's dive into breaches. As players improve their settlements or forts, the corrupted will take notice and breaches will begin to emerge in your territory, making travel and resource gathering more difficult, so long as these breaches go unaddressed. We will be able to see those breaches on our map. Some corrupted breaches can be managed by single player, while others will require groups of skilled players. And to destroy breaches, players must kill all the enemies protecting the beating heart of the breach first, and then an Azoth infused stuff is required to seal the breach, so make sure you have one of those with you. Destroying a corrupted breach rewards players with unique resources, found nowhere else. Interesting, what kind of resources we can get there? The stronger you become, the more the Corrupted will seek to destroy you. It seems the most fun will happen near highest level settlements, hopefully. But will breaches be strong enough to cause trouble in the area? To add more fun, I hope that breach difficulty will be tied to the overall strength of a company, including all settlements they own and not just the nearest one. Developers promise that Corrupted will open new and more powerful breaches, spewing out creatures of impossible size and strength. Well, I really really hope that these creatures of impossible size and strength will be as advertised and not just empty promises. One of the reasons, many reasons, that I quit playing Elder Scrolls Online was those stupid bosses and kindergarten mobs around them. Sadly, all MMOs treat AI as useless, brain-dead farmable kids with candies. There is no fun or fame in killing the same completely helpless enemy bazillion of times. Will Amazon break this wheel of total NPC annihilation in MMO games? Doubtful, as all MMOs are focused on making gods out of even casual players. And with usual MMO designs, breaches will be nothing more than just farmable small annoyances like those dolmens in Elder Scrolls Online. But there might be a little more fun PvE encounter called invasions, and it happens when the forces of corruption have amassed enough strength in a territory and lay siege to the fort. During the battle, the defenders must protect their fort against escalating waves of enemies. If the forces defending the fort are successful, the corrupted army is repelled and the battle is won. If the fort falls, the territory suffers and loses some upgrades, such as crafting stations, fort gates or fort turrets. The higher the territory's level, the more items get downgraded. In my opinion, this might be the best way how to limit companies from owning too many settlements, as if they fail to defend against invasions, it will downgrade their defense capabilities, including the level of gates and siege weapons. And defenders can't buy any siege platforms, but have to upgrade all through town projects before the invasion. In one of screenshots we can see that fort upgrade is split between invasions and wars. I wonder if we will have to upgrade siege weapons separately for those or not. And speaking about siege weapons, let's take a look what defenders will be using during invasions. Ballista, defender's version of the cannon, explosive shot that disrupts and knocks enemies back, repeater turret, functionally the same as attacker's version, fire dropper, pours burning molten liquid down on anyone below, Explosive Cannon. This will be a fun one. Fires an explosive shot that disrupts and knocks enemies back. It's most effective against groups of infantry and provides area denial. And Horn of Resilience. Provides a temporary healing and defensive buff to all allies in the area. Traps Inferno Mine. When enemy gets close enough, the Inferno Mine bursts and covers the area in fire. And Powder Keg does the highest damage of any siege weapon, making it extremely effective against gates. After the battle, the Corrupted retreat to replenish their force and the fort resets itself, restoring any structures that were destroyed. 
One more design without consequences where it doesn't matter if corrupted manage to completely destroy your structure or no. However, there is one very questionable design choice involved and that's probably why devs are so afraid to make this tactical, when players would have to defend the most important structures and losing one would actually mean that it's gone or downgraded to bottom level. And that design is who can join invasions. The day before, players can sign up for the event at the settlement's town board. The governor of the defending territory can choose 10 heroes to accompany them in the upcoming battle. The remaining 40 slots are randomly selected from players who signed up to take part in the next invasion. Note that only players at level 50 or above can participate in invasions. Clearly this sucks for the company that owns the settlement as governor won't be able to pick all 50 players, unlike in PvP wars. And this clearly is done to give everyone a fair chance to join the fight, so even random level 50 solo player can get in. Well, we will have to live with this. And even while it looks really annoying at first, it's not that bad. Invasions can happen once every 4 days, and settlement with active community should have no problems recovering. Yes, it sucks that they didn't even have a chance to properly defend, but they didn't lose the settlement. Also, huge guilds with hundreds and hundreds of players will have a much higher chance to squeeze in and fill those 40 random slots with their members, even through random. And we don't know how strong these invasions will be, they might end up being pathetic and easy even for 10 highly skilled players. But I hope that higher waves of invasion will require some serious teamwork. Sadly, in all games, similar events at some point become way too easy and one player can handle what was planned for a group of 4 to 6 players. Also regarding PvP, it's important to know if weaken invasions and prepare for war town projects overlap. In regards to important PvP upgrades like wall and gate strength and siege weapon levels, as then losing an invasion would actually weaken your defensive abilities for upcoming PvP wars, which may as well happen right after invasions, leaving very little time for defenders to rebuild. But that is not always bad, invasions should hit much harder companies that control multiple settlements, so other companies have at least a fighting chance, otherwise dominance is inevitable. But from my perspective, I want epic fights and not farmable pathetic mobs. When invasion starts, at first enemies start emerging from corrupted portals around the fort. This is the first of 8 waves of different enemies, so strategy and tactics, especially with battle tokens, come into effect. With battle tokens, players can buy different traps, ammo and elixirs. We will have to fight different kind of creatures with different skills and abilities, and here's a list of some of the creatures. Grunts pose little threat, but when they swarm, they can quickly take down any target. They focus on destroying structures. After a period of time they start to frenzy, creating fast, intense and increased damage, while also burning themselves out. Raiders are the shock troops of the invading forces, they are skilled, tough and well equipped. They are more than capable of handling themselves in melee combat. They focus on attacking players. Snipers hang back and take pot shots at players from afar. They prioritize targets on the ramparts and are effective at suppressing turrets. They are also evasive. Bombers are runners with explosives strapped to their back. They run at structures and then blow themselves up, dealing significant damage. We can probably picture those as powder kegs with legs. And it's highly recommended to take them down using ranged weapons because they explode on death. Brutes are huge, hulking beasts that smash structures. They will occasionally attack players, but are otherwise focused on destroying defenses. Bosses can vary. Some are focused on destroying structures, while others focus on attacking players. In addition, some of them apply buffs to other invading forces or debuffs to players. As you can see, invasion will bring some interesting enemies to our gates which is exactly what they will focus on destroying first. Then, when gates are destroyed, the enemy will go after the fort's claim. Players win an invasion by protecting the fort claim, until the time limit is reached. The invasion is lost if the enemy destroys the fort's claim, and it will cause a downgrade of their territory. Win or lose, players who contribute to the battle are rewarded with experience in-game currency and loot, depending on how many waves were completed. 
So it seems for the best loot possible, players will have to kill all 8 waves of enemies. If done and balanced properly, this might be fun, but remember that invasions can happen once every 4 days, so plenty of time to rebuild, at least crucial defenses. And invasions will feature different enemies, which is very good. Will losing invasion lower your faction's influence and make it easier to declare war on you? Nothing is said about that, but in any case that would add more work, as defenders will have to do more PvP missions and improve their influence, otherwise war is coming. Most PvP players probably will hate this design as they don't care about NPCs and all they want is PvP wars and to kill players. But at the same time they will get exactly what they want, as with this design more war should happen. Crippled Fort might attract enemy players sooner. How fair or unfair this all is, is a totally different question. But everyone will be in the same boat and play by the same rules, so as long as enemy factions will suffer from the very same design, it's perfectly fine. Plus, this is alpha design and might completely change in future. Anything here is subject to change. Beta is coming soon and players will test the hell out of this. And developers should have enough feedback to adjust and improve all that will be necessary. Thanks for watching and see you soon.